Hey Snapchat, coming to you on a break in my final day of vacation here in Hawaii. I'm covering the topic of how to get effective decisions made on boards. I actually think my advice here should be applicable for any type of group decision making. So whether you're on boards or otherwise, I hope you'll stick around. If you have limited board experience, the thing you'll learn today is that almost nothing on a board comes to an actual vote or at least a split decision. In my 17 years of sitting on boards, I've seen three split decisions ever. Boards have a bunch of perfunctory tasks they perform like annual budget or stock option plan or hiring and firing of senior execs. Those tend to be pretty simple decisions. The harder ones are things like deviations from budget, either because you're gonna change business lines, increase spend, or massively miss your targets. Also, it can be super controversial when it's uh, regarding executive compensation, particularly CEO. Importantly, you need to know the boards decide on hiring and firing of CEO, and uh, that's the most controversial of all. Boards decide on fundraising events. They also decide on M&A, whether you're gonna acquire a company or whether you wanna be sold. The last topic is perhaps the most important, which is boards will decide anything you ask. So be careful what you ask. The way to get effective decisions made is first set up a framework for the decision you're trying to make. This is a problem most people have. How you set up the issue that's trying to be decided is perhaps the most important in trying to actually drive a decision. Complex decisions need to be put in boxes and reduced to easier choices to make easier trade-offs. Every major decision, even complex ones, should have three options to choose from. Most humans can't decide for much more than that. Of course, the actual decision can pick little pieces from different options, but setting up three options is the best way to drive a discussion. For example, on one of my companies, we created vectors. We called them, do we want to be like Minecraft? Do we want to be an education company or do we want to be a platform? We then set up discussions around each one of these areas to try and drive a board discussion about what kind of company we really want to build. Another company I'm involved with wanted to acquire their largest European competitor. So we looked at a complex series of options about whether we should buy them now, later or not. Another big mistake management teams make is they don't make it clear what is your preferred option. You don't have to say it's the only option, but tell us your preference. You know the business better than we do, and we've backed you. So we may not choose your option, but we want to know what you think. It's okay to say you're not sure that you have a lot of internal debate, that you're not comfortable with which decision, but tell us what your preference is. Now, where naivete steps in and ineffective management teams don't get decision, you have to call people before the board meeting. All great decisions are made by lobbying before important meetings. You use meetings to ratify what's already decided. People really struggle with this. They want to feel like it's a bunch of politics or bullshit to do that. They think, why should I have to make pre call definition of politics is two or more people involved in any type of decision. I promise you, including your wife or husband. You need to send out the framework in advance to decision makers and you need to give them data and ability to actually make choices. Make the calls, work the room, understand what people's leanings are and which way they're probably going to decide. Understand what their issues are. Understand what over their dead body would they agree to. Think about, for example, congressional or parliamentary bodies. No group goes to a final decision without whipping the votes and knowing where they stand. This is actually a very important part of decision making because you force people to think in advance of what's important to them and it gives you a chance to alter your positions. The art of compromise and good decisions is if you call five or six people, you understand everyone's positions, you start to make minor modifications to bring everybody together. If you show up at a group decision that's really important to you and you don't know how everyone already leans, you're the sucker in the room. Trust me when I tell you investors call each other before board meetings because we're not naive. We want to understand where everyone else is coming from. So coming into a board meeting or an important decision, you may not have unanimity, but you know where all the cards lie. You know what everyone's intentions are. During the actual day, you need to control the discussion. You need to let everyone talk and not let people over-bully other people. A very effective way of doing this is knowing your allies in advance and asking your allies to set up the issue and lobby. Tell your allies who your enemies are and ask your allies to speak up when things get contentious. It allows you to stay more neutral. 
If certain board members take the issue down a rat hole, note down their points, say, I've heard you, I just want to give everyone the opportunity to speak. Another really strange observation I have is that people don't move for votes, they just discuss and discuss and discuss. If you're not going to get your way and it's super important to you to get this right, you can always delay the decision and tell people you want to delay the decision. But if you think you have the votes, move for a vote. I do this all the time at boards. When I've heard everyone talk and we go round and around, I say, look, I'd like to propose we move to a vote. This is my vote. When you move for a vote and you vote first, you set the pace and tone of the discussion. You're not always going to get your way. When you don't get your way, you have to accept it gracefully. If things aren't going your way, if the option isn't going your way, acknowledge it. Say, well, okay, I understand we're doing this, but can we make small modifications? Another thing that kills me is that decisions are reached in a board but not properly documented. I already told you in yesterday's session that most important legal decisions are not documented in the legal minutes. But you can still create a non-legal document that outlines what the votes were and what decisions were made. Send this around via email and ask everyone to weigh in and confirm that they believe this is the decision that was made. This is the way you codify decision making because often people come back 60 days later and say that's not what we agreed. I give this advice often about working decision makers before actual decisions and I know it appears Machiavellian. I know that newbies on boards really find discomfort in it and feel like they should be able to just turn up to a room and make a good group decision. Life doesn't work this way so I hope whether it's normal meetings or board meetings you'll take it seriously. If you want the results you want people need time to decide, consider, and debate. Pre-meetings are the best way to find compromises and to create little hedges between everyone's position and get a decision everyone feels good about. Know that if you have the votes probably everyone else will weigh in and you'll end up with a unanimous decision legally documented. If you want a fun lesson in this go see Hamilton. He learns the hard way in the Broadway musical that you don't have the votes. <laughs>